So the gamers across the board are not happy. I mean, why would the gamers be happy when your priority number one is monetization and your priority number last is innovation, right? And today we're gonna actually try very, very hard to learn why that is the case you guys are gonna be looking like this throughout this video that is my promise like this video if you just want good games man just like the video if not dislike the video if not all right let's see if gta 6 can save us or not roll it hey i'm not sure if you got the memo but triple a gaming is dying that's right if yeah. you happen to miss the thousands of other videos yeah. on this topic it yeah. would appear the triple a games are in big trouble fret not if you're a fan though enough of these companies are still doing fine releasing blockbuster titles and making billions of dollars but it does seem in many ways this portion of the industry has been collapsing under its own weight as yeah, of late I wonder think why. about how often we've seen these new big AAA games launching and failing by most metrics. I mean, recently we had a few high-profile examples. Suicide Squad Kill the yeah. Justice League, the live service game from Rocksteady oh, launched in February, peaked at 13,000 concurrent players and dropped- Yeah, this is like straight up comedy, bro. <laughs> The, this game is where the clowns came in and said that okay bro like i need to be there for the circus man because after all the circus without the clowns is not a circus all right <laughs> yeah let's be real a circus needs the clowns so you know what this circus was like okay at least we need 175 clowns and 175 clowns are playing right now okay well there we are or I should Down not okay you know what I take it back that's kind of like that sounds kind of rude though that's kind of sounds rude of me but holy crap 175 people are playing this game and the all-time peak was 13,000 now check this out right apparently Bloomberg is now reporting that Rocksteady might shut down oh, shit. Oh, shit. this is the ultimate of uh, getting woke and going broke like literally because this is the only game that they put out in the last eight years and secondly they are losing 200 million dollars can a brother get two pennies i'm not even gonna ask that bro like they are losing 200 million dollars <laughs> this is insane this is what the, uh, this is what yeah, yeah this is what force dei does to uh these suckers man yeah good riddance I guess. Up down to an abysmally low 400 one month later. The game averaged review scores of around 60% from critics, and according to its own publisher, sales fell far below expectations, oh, resulting in a poor financial quarter. The net result of them developing this game, it cost Warner Bros. nearly $200 million in losses. Skull and Bones, the standalone <laughs> spin-off of the much-beloved ship combat from Assassin's Creed Black Flag, spent over 11 years in development, reportedly cost Ubisoft soft over 200 million to make and immediately post release found itself in shambles and washed ashore review scores averaged around 61 the game accrued less than 1 million total players across all platforms and apparently it is not expected i'm like baffled that it it got 1 million people playing the game like holy crap and, and i have seen you know what i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna lie to you guys i have seen people saying that it's the it's the best game ever on the planet okay maybe i'm exaggerating with best game on the planet but i have seen people say that it's a very good game it is a Bruh. very it is a very good game it's the best it's one of the best game i played no cap i have seen comments like that bro Holy crap. Now, I do have to agree that gamers, our gamer species is very, very young. Thankfully, most gamers are waking up. I like to see that. So I'm going to pick out this positive and share with you guys. A lot of gamers are now waking up, which is a W. But still, we, we need to evolve as gamers and we need to demand better. As a brown man, I demand better. As a brown man, I demand video games to be better. I demand, as a brown man, I demand online on PlayStation and Xbox to be free, just like the PC. Like the video if you agree, dislike if you disagree expected to recoup its development costs. Not a great showing for the world's first quadruple A game. Yeah. Both of these examples, I think... Where is a Penta A game, though? Is GTA 6 gonna be a Penta? Penta? Like, 5? Five, 5A five game? Let's find out. Highlight some of the bigger issues for triple A games in general. Massive budgets, long development times, and no room for failure. Many of mm. these games take, on average, 5 to 7 years to make, with development time for some of these titles exceeding a decade. And this yeah, time translates to that's gta 6 right there man if gta 6 fails bro i swear to god man on december 32nd of the year gta 6 comes out december 32nd i'll become a monk and settle myself on a mountain in tibet Bruh. 
raise your hands if you're gonna join me. Let me know. On December 30, uh, 32nd, I guess we can form like a small group. Because I don't think many people want to become a monk, right? Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? But the real ones definitely gotta be, though. The real, one, the real ones probably want to be become a monk and settle themselves on a mountain in Tibet in search of the meaning of life, let's just say, right? I'm gonna go... Re I'm really gonna go after becoming a monk and, 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 and go after finding out, finding out the truth and finding the real meaning of life, guys. Do loads of money. In fact, I would say one of the biggest sources of problems for AAA gaming, period, stems money? from the fact that these Whoa. games cost way too much to make. In the oh, okay. late 90s and early 2000s... Also, Wolf Force DEI, yeah, making the, the games uh, not for the player but for investors rather yeah there are a bunch of things but okay let's since see. the high end of development cost for games included titles like final fantasy 7 and halo 2 which both cost 40 million dollars or world of warcraft which cost 65 million dollars but again mm -hmm. these numbers were at the high end of cost in the time frame between say 95 and 2005 most other games that we'd consider AAA of this time period fell well below the mark the original bioshock was made for just 20 25 million dollars legend of Damn. zelda ocarina of time cost 12 million dollars oh, metal crap. gear solid cost 10 million call of duty finest hour 8.5 million the original mass effect was reportedly made for under 3 million dollars and everquest was also made multiple factors for sh for sure why these games succeeded with that low budget but but simply put right back in the days these suckers actually made games because they were passionate and also the uh what was this called the attention spans of everybody was longer and, and also games were kind of like fresh on the mind of course and uh yeah right like back then uh, people necessarily gamers didn't necessarily demand for like good graphics because at that time this was considered peak uh, I, I remember like playing gta san andreas and playing that game as a kid i thought that i was playing real life let's just say right because yeah still to this day the memories i have right now even currently when I'm thinking about it in my head, I, I know it's not true, but back then I truly, truly believed that the graphics were like real, Bruh. real life. Like the video if you actually agree, man, because back in the days, bro, we didn't need that much, bro. We didn't need that much. So yes, I do agree that uh, expectations have risen. And why not? Absolutely, bro, absolutely. Right now, Jeff Keighley is saying, lower your expectations. Uh, I'm I'm probably gonna put this video out after Summer Games Fest, but I'm filming this v beforehand, right? But we're finding out that so yeah, this is me from the past. But apparently, uh, Jeff Keighley, the host of Summer Game Fest, he's saying lower your expectations down. Which translation? I mean, if you're not catching the memo here, ga Summer Game Fest is most likely gonna be bad. <laughs> It's most likely gonna be bad and we're not gonna have too many games. The only big game that's getting revealed is, uh, is Call of Duty Black Ops 6, like holy crap. Other than that, we're not sure what else we're gonna get. I, I suppose we're gonna get like one or two other games that's probably gonna be big. Uh, if you're watching this later on, because surely you are. Correct, uh, let me know what else they revealed. I mean, I would know for sure because I'm gonna be live streaming the reveal. But here's the thing, back in the days, these seconds also made games for gamers. That's what's missing right now because they are making games for investors. Fake, forced, wokeness, and DEI crap is also ruining games. It's a big factor right now. Monetization, that's that is their priority number one, and innovation is last. Because back in the days, they were promoting innovation. They were not promoting politics. Right now, they're doing the opposite, promoting monetization and politics. Yeah, and of course, and no wonder why gaming is going downhill. No wonder why gamers are, even after uh, us getting smoother gameplays and better graphics, gamers are still like, hey, that, that game sucks, that game's trash. There's a reason for it. And these are a couple of reasons that I listed. There are, of course, more, and you can definitely put it in the comments, but... Wait for, for only it. $3 million. Can you believe that? But over the past two decades, things have become much more expensive across the board, but this applies to game development as well. On average, it seems that most AAA games nowadays will cost in the ballpark of $50 million, with many of the biggest games swinging well above that number. Breaking yeah. the $100 million mark included Battlefield 4, GTA 4, Destiny... And both of these games were actually good. GTA 4, oh yeah, absolutely deserved to be that $100 million game, but right now what we're hearing is that GTA 6 is uh, between a billion, one billion, and two billion. <laughs>
That game better succeed, bro. That game better, better be good, man. What are we thinking about GTA 6, guys? And Final Fantasy 14. Games that cost over 200 million to make were Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Horizon How? Forbidden West, Last of Us 2, New World, Star Wars The Old Republic, and Elder Scrolls Online. Spider-Man 2 cost over 300 million. Yeah. Cyberpunk 2077, 400 million. Star Citizen has broke and counting the $600 million mark. Jeez. And Genshin Impact ran in at 700 hundred million dollars in development cost although i do believe this figure oh, includes post-launch support nevertheless they're getting getting close to a billion dollars in development cost man i know what yo i never thought that game was uh 700 million okay i'm shocked right now this is me bro like what the hell and, and what yeah getting closer to 1 billion homie we're hearing that uh gta 6 is gonna be between 1 billion and 2 billion bro Cost for that game, although I think it's probably made over a billion at this point. But regardless, between the fact that these games now take on average at least half a decade to make, and they cost so many millions of dollars, the result is little to no room for failure. Yeah. And when a yeah, AAA yeah, yeah. game does flop, well, we've seen the outcome in recent months, with a new round of layoffs announced every other oh, week no. and seemingly yeah. nearly as many studio closures. Surprise, most companies can't afford to take five years making a game that ends up not only only not making money but losing them 200 million that is the opposite of what they were hoping for and i think okay a recipe of making a banger okay if you're a dev watching this video for the love of god make the games for your audience for your gamers okay simply put that's all you need to know that's all that's everything you're gonna succeed you're gonna make money all right Okay, but but I understand that it's like your superiors, uh, your uh, uh, the publisher's fault as well. It's not necessarily just like the de the dev's fault. The dev is more like a worker and, and is doing what he's being told to do. I, I I understand that part, right? Okay, so publishers, right? Make the game for gamers. Make the game for your audience, dog. Investors are gonna come because if your product is succeeding, the investors are gonna invest in your company. If you're gonna make the games for your investors. Gamers are not gonna be on your game, gamers gonna hate your game, gamers gonna leave your game, and ultimately your numbers will be poor, and when you do those earnings call, earnings call, uh, your financial calls, where you talk about how much money you made, right, uh, for two people that do not know what is uh, an earnings call, this is where they, they report how much money they're making, and ultimately investors hear how much money they're making, and based on that they make a decision whether, whether, to or not invest in their stock and if they're making a lot of money they will invest in their stock which ultimately would uh boost up their 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 stock value and they're gonna make more money right yeah exactly so for uh, yeah stop making the games for your investors because if your game is succeeding with gamers the investors will come and when, wh what i mean by making your games for gamers is simply put Stop the wall, uh, woke politics, okay? Stop the woke politics. Stop the crazy amount of monetization. I get it, like, you want to have somewhat, okay, fine. But, but like, damn. Uh, when all your game is microtransactions galore, right? Like, what the hell are we doing here, bro? Right? So, stop with the wokeness. Stop with the politics. Stop with the crazy-ass, greedy-ass microtransactions. And, come on, man. Stop with this quadruple A... Um, uh, quadruple a game bro get my mom with that bro i think because of that for the most part triple a games are just way too expensive for them to take any risks i mean this is pretty obvious games that don't take risks get pretty boring after the thousandth iteration that you've played if 95 percent of the structure design and gameplay of let's say your brand new mmo plays exactly like every other mmo that i've already played over these past 30 years guess what it's gonna get really boring really fast and in an industry categorized as entertainment if i'm bored I'm out of here. <laughs> I guess unless I'm addicted, yeah. in which case yeah. I'll stick around for a little while longer. Uh, and also people's attention spans are very low as well. Uh, and we got a lot going on in life as well. So it, it's a multitude of factors as well. Uh, yeah, but if the game is good, Sick is gonna play though. Like if the game is good, like Sick is gonna play, right? Like, hey, whatever. Like Sick is gonna play. Sick is gonna be Sick is after all. But <laughs> if, if the game is good, that's all what matters, bro. That's all what matters, man. That's all what matters, and right now, like, be honest, man, be honest. What is that one game that you find really, really fun right now? I'm talking about the latest game. I'm not talking about, like, an older game. Whenever we have situations like that, I, I see comments from you guys saying that, well, I got a good backlog, man. 
I will go back to this game, that game. Fair. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. But specifically, we're talking about like a game that's new and out or a game that's going to come in months from now uh, or years from now. But ultimately, it's probably going to get canceled or delayed or comes out uh, half baked. Right. Yeah. I I'm talking about the games, a new game that's out right now that you're really loving it. I, I don't know what I, I don't have any bro personally I don't have any I'm assuming for some of you might be hell divers okay fair Paul Paul world Paul world okay what else what else I, I got none man damn you game designers developing but psychological manipulation yeah these games cost too much money they can't afford to take any risks and the result is the bland mush of focus tested streamlined psychologically optimized chum that we are so accustomed to and don't get me wrong here hey i enjoy eating my dopamine manipulating chum from time to time as well it can be satisfying to turn your brain off and smash through hordes of monsters after all lizard brain go burr uh, i'm not above it and i'm not better i'm no better than anyone else in fact looking for group for uber durial farming by the way hit me up if, if you're doing it i think the worst part though isn't even how these games are designed and focus tested into that mush that gameplay loop but rather because of the vast amounts of money and time it takes to make these we the consumers end up on the brunt end of recouping those costs enter every microtransaction you've ever known and i know you're sick of hearing the list but here's yeah. the rundown we of course have the box price for most of these games oh, but then no, there are yeah. the free to play variants which inevitably will include some variation of subscription nowadays these are pretty much done in the form of battle passes and then you've got the cash shops with the microtransactions the yeah. cosmetics that's the easy one everyone's happy to hand wave those at this point gone are the days of earning your cosmetics through playing the game yeah like the the, the friendly uavs online like that, that friendly UAV online. yeah exactly like the the skins and the new thing that's happening right now that most people are aware of but not necessarily covering i mean i'm not seeing youtubers too many youtubers cover this right now maybe he is about to i hope he does but it's the hundred dollars game price how you might ask because some of you are like uh, well schedule i'm uh, i'm only seeing it like seventy dollars we're like what you doing you what you doing hundred dollars simply put they are doing the three days early access yeah so like the standard edition that says seventy dollars they purposely delay that and they do they they're doing the deluxe edition that would come out on time but they would refer to it as three days early access right and they're gonna sell it for a hundred dollars yeah so that's like their new strategy for selling games at a hundred dollars but without getting the backlash yeah uh, ubisoft is like doing this with star wars a session screen as well with the bbc samurai as well but they changed the bbc samurai a lot of people were like okay so the bbc samurai is gonna be cool to play with he he's also gonna have a family so it's gonna be cute uh you know bbc samurai in japan but uh, sadly or i should say surprise surprise uh, they turned him gay as well so yeah that that's like recent news if you guys didn't know so yeah guys no longer bbc samurai in uh, in japan with the family bro they said ubisoft said Family? What are we talking about, man? <laughs> Family is only for losers. Family is only for Fast and Furious. Oh, shit. That kind of rhymed, actually, though. What? Okay, family for losers. Family for Fast and Furious. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. That's crazy. That's a mixtape right there. Boys, smash the like button. Game, you pay for them now. And then the convenience features, right? Where we spend extra money to bypass the inconveniences that were put into the game by the developers so we would want to spend that money and then the most egregious variation is the paying for power where you spend money to speed up your progression this is also that known true, as yeah. pay to skip skip stands for skipping playing the game that's pay what it's win, for win, and then to win. go along with these cash shops with these sold convenience features and these powers that you're paying for you will have these games designed aimed to pushing you towards the shop uh such as having worse quality of life so that you want to buy the convenience features to bypass it or having inflated grinds to push you towards purchasing that power and those skips and now yes, man sir. we are triple a gaming as i uh -oh. said in another recent video of mine any game that sells convenience and or power of some sort they 
They are literally making the game worse on purpose so that you are given motivation to buy what they are selling. It just so happens, unfortunately enough, one of my favorite genres of games, the MMOs, the live service games, they are especially guilty of this. They're the worst offenders. And I think there's a, a nice separation that can be made between the AAA games industry for like the single player linear playthrough experience and then the AAA game industry when it comes to those live services and those MMOs. A lot of what I'm talking about leans more towards that, although there can be an argument for a lot of these AAA games, um, single player titles as well. It's not really the, the portion of the AAA industry that I'm talking about. So anyways, yes, AAA games, they take forever to develop. They cost hundreds of millions of dollars. <coughs> They're too expensive to take risks, which result in a lot of them feeling the same. And on top of that, some, especially those MMOs and live service titles that I love so dearly, it hurts me so much. They're all pretty much made worse in order to sell us microtransactions yeah. on the back end. So I think it's no surprise then, in recent years, uh, a lot of the AAA portion of the industry is being put to shame by indie and mid-tier studios. Devs mm -hmm. who started out making their game out of a Reddit thread, just like uh, uh, coming up with an idea on a Reddit post yeah. and saying, hey, let's make a studio and let's make a game. That's what resulted in Last Epoch. Or developers who admit they don't even really know how to make games and end up churning out Pal World, one of the biggest crazy. games of all time on Steam. It is absolutely crazy. We've got studios in- Is it still like doing numbers? Like, is it still doing well? Even if it's not, I mean, in the very beginning, it sold uh, like crazy and they made a ton of money. So, yeah, yeah. And uh, apparently what he's saying is something that I'm finding out for the first time. And he's saying that the devs didn't even know how to make games. <laughs> and they turned out this. Now, even though like I did not play Paul World, it's not for me. But I remember, like, people were all over it. People were, like, shooting up, uh, shooting up on their monitors, let's just put it that way, right? Like, suckers were playing it, and suckers were loving this game, and they made a lot of money, man. So, holy crap, right? Holy craps. This game put a lot of AAA games to shame. And, and that's good. I love to see that for sure. In many cases made up of 50 or less employees just demolishing the sales numbers and player counts of development conglomerates with tens of thousands of people working on titles for them. In the past 12 Crazy, months, just man. looking at my own gaming habits, I'll, I can ha happily say some of my favorite games have been Enshrouded, Last Epoch, Manor Lords, No Rest for the Wicked, V Rising, Baldur's Gate 3, and Witchfire. Not to so he, he's like more of a guy that is into games uh, similar to Asmongold because anybody that plays these games I'm thinking that they're like part of they're in the same audience or category as Asmongold right because I never really played these games man like am I missing out how many of you guys are into games like that man I I'm gonna fully criticize myself guys I'm gonna take a dunk on myself here right now yeah sadly like I grew up playing Call of Duty's Battlefield's game Battlefield games uh the entire series the GTA yeah, sadly. Bruh. I wish I also played other games. Uh, the only good quality here for me was, uh, in terms of gaming, is that I did play a lot of single player games, so I guess. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's the only good quality, but other than that, bro, like, I grew up playing Call of Duty, Battlefield, GTA, and all of these franchises have disappointed us in the last uh, couple of years. GTA, how? Because. We didn't even get a new GTA. I mean, GTA 6 is coming out soon. Okay, so now it's like, okay, whatever. We're gonna remain to be seen if it's gonna be as good as we think it's gonna be or not. But I hope it exceeds expectations. But holy crap, right? Like, GTA has definitely disappointed us with GTA Online, the microtransactions. And of course, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for the new game. But guys, check out this video on the screen because this recently just happened. This is what Activision recently did man i don't know if you guys were able to catch it on time or not if you've seen it then you can check out the video on the left otherwise check it out and i'll see you there